greetings. Welcome, greetings. My apologies for the delay, technical difficulties. You are indeed now sitting live with the Divine Prince and always in archive at your leisure and convenience here on YouTube Live. My YouTube channel is Voodoo Thai, B like Victor, O O D O O T like Tom, Y E, Voodoo on YouTube. I am Pan African spiritualist, practitioner, author, and advisor. Elagoon Oloye Hudu Obea Okur, sharing with you in all things spiritual, mystical, metaphysical, cosmic, evolutionary, revolutionary, healing, and holistic from a Pan African Hudu world spiritualist perspective. Understanding that all is truly and indeed a blessing. You can just see beyond the veils, for it is all just an illusion and a test in one of the greatest divine mysteries of this life cycle. This is my constant prayer, my mantra, affirmation, reverberation, reiteration, and it is indeed my ever living reality. It is crucial to the very foundation of my understanding, my teaching my walk and my works along this divine, all blessing life path and journey. It is how I, the divine prince, make sense out of all that we're challenged with here in our daily existence on Mother, Father Earth. And it is my personal place of power and understanding. The place from where I begin, the place from where I lies and crystallize all my endeavors understanding that I and I alone create and co-create my divine destiny, and I and I alone create and co-create my divine all-blessed reality. And so it is. Ashe, Ashe, oh, Ashe. This Monday, October 14th, 2019, I am a humbled, honored, grateful for each and every opportunity to share, to give, there's a saying that you have to give it to keep it. So indeed, if you have a gift, if you believe you've been born with a veil, if you believe you've been touched by spirit, know that it's not just for you. It's not a selfish possession. It's not a car or a piece of jewelry, for indeed it belongs to the creative powers of the universe. Olo Damari, my woke. Uh, Lisa, the, the most high, by whatever name you choose to call him or her, it as the supreme, the supreme being. But we, as God that walk earth, who must navigate not only spiritual dimensions, but also earth plane dimensions, must learn to balance, balance our divine nature with our earth nature. It brings to mind the idea of trying to operate within many of these indigenous world traditional systems to include ATR, but attempting to adopt them, if you will, for a more modern context. And the first thing we have to do is orient our head. If your head is not oriented, no other part of your body can and, and will be oriented. And so we first must orient our head and be clear about our understanding about the origins and the truth about what voodoo is, what animism is, what ATR is, and how that was first birthed into creation, but then how it has manifest over the centuries, uh, if you will, and how we now are attempting to apply and utilize these forces in a present setting. Um, before my schedule got <laughs> tied up, I had every intention on coming in and doing a show. And, and I'm going to some degree bring that show today where we look at animism, animism. Before we start debating paganism and voodoo and witchcraft and, and, and uh, Lukomi and, and, and the like, we must first understand root words, root traditions, root teachings, root beliefs that are unifying 
not separating as it relates to Ruby worldwide. We then had to look at history and geography and the differences, the changes that were made within these traditions being encaptured into enslavement and brought across the mighty waters, if you will, of the Middle Passage. We now have a animistic indigenous tradition that now has an organized system appropriated onto it. And some of the symbols of that appropriation show up in Haitian voodoo, show up in Dominican voodoo, show, show up in Lukomi and, and Santeria, and how we have now amalgamated, syncretized the tradition to match not only our present day usage, good or bad, but also the other forces that are now at work, commercialism, appropriation, and all the other forms of bastardization that take place as it relates to the traditions. So for instance, some of you are acknowledging Legba today because you've read it in many books, because it's Monday. And again, I'm here to share with you and reinforce with you that that was something created out of pop culture, botanica pop culture. Indeed, botanicas, we need our botanicas. I utilize botanicas. We all, to some degree, utilize botanicas. But be clear, walking into the drugstore as a patient, it's not the same thing as walking into the drugstore as a pharmacist or, or, or medically scientifically trained uh, uh, scientists or physician in that arena. So there are products, there are objects, there are implements that mirror pop culture. If you don't understand what pop culture is, what's popular in the pop cultural format, which today now includes the internet. Once upon a time, it would have been the news, the media, movies, TV, but today it now includes even our internet. So in rushing from one gig to the next gig to now bringing forward what I think is a very important and um, needed discussion is our awareness or lack thereof of the forces in which we are now invoking operating in, opening up in your personal space, but then in the space of those in your in your circle, in your peer group that you have contact with as we dabble, if you will, quotation marks, in various world traditions, various world sciences, primarily from Western perspective, because we believe we can, because we believe we should, and because it's so readily available to us, uh, quite often right at the fingertips on the internet. And so I take note to a news article I read this morning. I believe this story came out of Venezuela um, where a husband and several members of the family um, were murdered and killed, um, apparently in what is being described as a witchcraft involved witchcraft induced uh, scenario. Um, they've discovered evidence upon searching uh, in the wife's uh, habitat residence, uh, but also a friend of the wife's um, uh, in, in, involved in the story who they've discovered paraphernalia, as the law would say, um, witchcraft implements, tools, evidence of of ideas that they were trying to invoke, trying to work into their magic. And so on the logical blue-minded side, we might say, well, you know, she wanted to kill her husband, she wanted to kill her spouse. Uh, she was invoking the spirits to protect their tracks, according to the news article, uh, to keep it from being discovered, uncovered, uh, to keep it hidden, uh, so this is why they, they drew the conclusion that it was witchcraft involved, if not inspired, 
uh, directly in this particular homicide. And we've seen other homicides and, and murders and, and really negative cases in the news, in the media, in the last 10 years, uh, trying to keep that internet, social media timeline, uh, particularly in the, in the last 10 years, even if you include the uh, zombie attacks, where it was said that the uh, smoking of this artificial synthetic uh, marijuana was, was leading to the this zombie apocalypse, uh, and, and these people were uh, accused allegedly of eating people uh, as a result of that. And no matter what side of the coin you fall on, the blue side, that is something scientific, biological, uh, uh, health oriented, um, mental health oriented, versus the red side, which might be there's something spiritual at work. Th then what forces do we examine if we say that it's something spirit at work. Now, once upon a time, you know, everything was blamed on the devil. And we know that that was the direct uh, connection to evangelical Christianity. Even the earlier um, uh, Christian crusades uh, where you either embraced the Christ or, or you died. And then that led to a sort of a, a dark period, dark ages, if you will, where almost everything was blamed on the devil. Uh, even in our historical study, we can correlate many of the manuscripts that we can look at uh, that speak about witchcraft, the binding of uh, angels and demons to do the work, the chores, the bidding, if you will, of the uh, proficient practitioner. Uh, we don't see that in ATR in more indigenous world traditions until about the colonial period, uh, until about the time that we see those Christian and Islamic beliefs. We often neglect, and I don't want to be accused of neglecting uh, the Islamic presence uh, as it relates to enslavement, um, its effects on world thought. Uh, our very numbers are Arabic. So we can't overlook as well the, the and I often say that they're the flip side of the same coin, uh, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, to a great degree, study their books, study their authors, to a great degree, it's, a, it's, a, it's an argument over a very particular position in the world. But when we begin to examine indigenous cultures. First, it's approached by your archaeologists and your scientists in a very different way. And then how that shows up in our books, um, we then have to examine that in, in the process. But the idea that uh, good and bad, good and evil, right and wrong, is somehow very specific to Christianity or that triad of Judaism, Christianity, and, and Islam um, is really an incorrect assumption on how the indigenous world view spirits. Indeed, Africa didn't have a devil, for instance, or, or Lucifer, for instance, but for indeed, for sure they have devils and they had gems that are well documented, particularly when you go into specific ethnic groups uh, within the tribes and the families and the bloodlines that many of the voodoo-oriented traditions come from. And before I get too far ahead of myself, greetings. I absolutely am grateful and appreciative for each and every one of you who've taken the time out of your day to be present here with the Divine Prince for this revolutionary hoodoo, New Orleans voodoo, secrets and recipes. If this is your first time, I'm grateful, Habar Ghani, welcome, Baba and me, in whatever language you might communicate in spiritually. But I welcome you that if you have a question or a comment that you wish me to respond to publicly, to type it in all capital letters, that way I can uh, uh, distinguish it from the other uh, conversation in the group. Ay Bobo, Empress, Ay Bobo. Uh, is it okay to charge for gifts? Um, 
Keona, that's a great question. Is it okay to charge with gifts? Now, if you will, and you might have to remind me, give me like four more minutes before I answer that, because I want to first lay out a clear foundation about what I'm talking about. I want to talk about the lack of awareness in, in modern practice, whether that's witchcraft, voodoo, Palo, whatever, and, and particularly those things that are showing up in pop culture, um, the Orisha romance, but also our, our love affair, uh, our interest in other uh, cultures, religions, traditions, and magical practices. Uh, a quick sidebar, I will say, um, I also blame the internet a great deal, but also um, some of the pop cultural cinema projects like Harry Potter, um, like Game of Thrones that have come out in the last 10 years, 10, 15 years, that have also influenced this great interest in voodoo, hoodoo, obia, root work. And, and many people see it in a very real way not necessarily an authentically spiritually real way, but see it in a very real way. Uh, there are those who would want to turn it into games, turn it into virtual reality spaces online, um, et cetera. And so in so doing the emphasis, of course, I put the emphasis on doing the homework. I put the emphasis on doing your research. I put the emphasis on being clear about what your expectations are, who you're operating with, and what you're operating in. But that is not the pop cultural message that is often uh, uh, propagated today in our movies, films, books, and, and indeed in our own conversations in the social media stratosphere about these traditions. And we see the constant ad, the constant advertisement, the constant clone profile, the constant fake profile, whose interest is specifically on feeding the carnal. How quick can you grow my boobs? How quick can you grow my butt? How quick can you grow my penis? How quick can you bind my love interest to me and make them have no interest in any? The more we continue to allow that message to be the forefront of the message, the truth continues to have to be found, even when it's not being masked in mystery, even when it's not being masked in secrecy. People happen to find it, are finding that they have to seek it. And I say that in any path, Eshu stands at the crossroads. And we like to blame Eshu for being the trickster. We like to misrepresent what being the trickster is. And it's a divine trickster that is rooted in ego. It's rooted in ego. It's when we think we know, it's when we think we understand, it's when we think we can't learn, it's when we refuse to humble ourselves, it's when we refuse to be quiet long enough to hear what's being said, to pay attention to what's being demonstrated, that the trick falls into place. That's when the trick falls into place. And it's popular to be angry it's also natural to be in human terms, but it's also popular to be angry because there's an angry space in pop culture. Whether it's our talking heads, you know, on the Fox or the CNN or the MSNBC, or whether it's you and I and those who create and recreate podcasts that are rooted in anger, fear, a, a sense of, of grandiose righteousness that is usually backed by ignorance and a lack of knowledge and a lack of doing the homework and a lack of doing the study. My godchildren can't say that. <laughs> Indeed, my godchildren can't say that, but I can't speak for everybody else's godchildren. And I can't speak for everyone who's attempting if not representing for the practice and the tradition in pop culture and social media. I just keep saying the blue colored things, do your research, do your homework. Who was I a year ago? Who was I five years ago? 
who was I 10 years ago? Who did my mama know me as 20 years ago? Who did my daddy know me as 25 years ago? Those are the kind of questions you have to have in your head as you do your homework, particularly in the in the spirit of, of pop culture and social media. Um, I pay attention. <laughs> I've watched the transformations and the shape shifting and, and the chameleons. I, I've seen it with my own eyes and I make no efforts to call people out. Just don't come for me. But I make no efforts to call people out. I just ask people, are you paying attention? I ask the questions, are you paying attention? Really? Even in Instagram, for instance, and we like to pick on Instagram. I've seen people wipe out their whole timeline and then rebuild it. I've seen people go back, you know, to a particular period and then wipe everything else out, assuming that it's not screenshot, saved, copied somewhere in, in, in the cloud, which those of us who are erudite know is absolutely the absolute truth. It, it's already out there. It's already copied. It's already footprint somewhere. You just have to know how to find it. You just have to know how to locate it. And some things are not easy to locate, you know, so you've got to, again, do your homework. And so you have to be a skilled researcher. You, you have to be skilled at doing background. You have to be skilled at looking in who and what and where and when. So we cannot, in this day of I am God, I am goddess, we cannot, in this day of I don't need a teacher, I don't need a leader, I don't need a mentor, I don't need an elder, I'm self-taught. Okay, be self-taught. I say all the time, okay, there's a legitimate position for self-taught in many indigenous world traditions, but it's the hardest. It's the hardest. For instance, self-taught in, in, in the native or indigenous uh, American cultures might have been you being out in the desert by yourself for 30 days. That's self-taught. Symbolizing walking through life without protection, without backup, without a, a choir, without an eight-man corner, without popularity without your family there to sort of, and many of you profess to live that existence. That's my story. For decades, that's been my story, but, but many of you profess that to also be your story. So you've got to understand what animism is. If you're going to look at anything African, you, you've got to understand what anim animism is. And it is the understanding, the belief, if you will, in, in indigenous world tradition that all creation, all physical, all physicality, all matter has spirit. So we like to talk about pharmaceutical companies, big box food, you know, what's in our food, what's in our water, what's in your spirit, what's in your spirit products, you know, what's in the text, the body of the text that you're reading that's not immediately visible to you on the paper. Understanding animism is understanding that wood, earth, water, fire, air or the mist, and then the ether, which includes your mind, your, your head, has a connection that's very real and apparent in all things. So it's in your paper tarot deck, it's in your your gemstone ruins, it's in your palm nuts, it's in your cowrie shells, it's on the paper, it's it's in your word document, it's in your it's in everything. But we have separated spirit from physical, we have separated spirituality from religion, we have separated, you know, the ethers from reality. And so many are walking through life segmented in your understanding. And when you're segmented in your ori, in your head, in your understanding, everything else is segmented. Everything else is segmented. Understand what coarse crystal is and how it works. You can shatter a perfected point. This is a quartz point. You can shatter it, but each piece contains the mother load. Each piece contains the DNA code, just like 
they can scrape your blood, scrape your your your, your body fluids, etc. And provided enough is there that has not been destroyed by anything unnatural, they're able to then repiece together an algorithm. Okay, so you can't be disjointed. You can't be broken up in, in, in your thought process and how you view yourself first then your power and your position in the world. And then that how that is manifested outside in a physical sense in the world. First, energetically, because they don't always show up first physically. People see you and they either smile or they got that. Okay, so it, it don't show up physically first. It shows up in the spirit realm first. So understanding that there are things in nature that are necessarily for you that aren't necessarily positive, that aren't necessarily healing, th that don't necessarily have a purpose that we can quite understand is how many of us are going about interacting in the spirit realm with many of these spirit practices and traditions. And so we're opening up doorways, portals, energy, gem, Thought forms, if, if that's somehow a safer word for you, that are becoming a part of your reality, that, that help to feed that recreative process that I talk about, our ability to create and recreate our reality with our tongue. We have made fairies and gnomes and angels somehow passive. And as we enter this Halloween season, even witches, vampires, werewolves, ghosts, you know, have a pop cultural nature to them that has to be sellable, that has to be marketable, that has to be able to be on the shelves down low where your, you know, your toddlers and your young people are. Understand this is how things are being sold to you. So that they can see them and pick them up and, and run and say, mommy, daddy, grandma, grandpa, buy me this. So we've got to be clear about the, the reality of gin, of demons, of spirits, of negative forces that set themselves up in degrees. Because some of them set themselves up in your food, in your elementals, in your water, what you drink what you're taking in physically and then others set up in other areas of your realm of reality because we aren't just biological we're energetic we're spiritual we're emotional we're, we're many other components and so those of us who think we're too tough for that got too much armor for that too prayed up for that that's what temptation really is in, in world religions. So then the spirit forms find a way to get at you where your weakness is. And the spirit world knows your weakness greater and can see it in a way that humans often can't. We can mask for humanity. We can mask for each other. We can look happy when we might really be sad. We can show up for the nine to five when you really might be counting your bills. You might really be worried about, you know, what's going on with your child at school. And this Western culture forces us to be artificial, forces us to be fake, forces us to somehow mask the truths, the reality that, that we got razor bumps and that or stubble. You know, or, or that we might be in front of a hundred watt bulb that, whether it's on set or in your podcast, that might reveal impurities in your skin. You know, but then there's a literal and a figurative to all spiritual truths. So there's that literal thing that we all do to sort of cover up, mesh. You wear your tie if that's required at your job. Certain clothes they don't let you wear. You know, in your workplace, etc. But then there's those things that we mask spiritually and try to hide spiritually and try to make up for and, and cover for. And so as humans, 
that's something we all experience. That's something we all grapple with to some degree. But to then invite that in at the spirit level is a whole nother thing, whole nother thing. So we now don't identify greed, lust, envy, you know, as somehow spiritually rooted as we once did. We now somehow see them as maybe character defects. Um, you know, we, we say the haters, you know, haterade, you know, but we put that in a context that's like, it's a flaw. It's something that's not unique to all humanity. Um, but we don't, as we once did within the bodies of these traditions, look at them also as forms of energy, as powers that can set themselves up in items, items of clothing, which create envy, jealousy, animosity. It isn't just, I don't have that and I want to desire that too, because all humanity says, I don't have that and I wanted that to desire that too. But then some of us decide to work or get an education or find other means to acquire access to before we go to the, to the straight shortcut. Uh, forgive me, beloved. <clears throat> I know I said, give me four or five minutes before I answered your questions. Charging for your gifts. <clears throat> it's really interesting how we place value in Western culture. Not you, beloved. This is my attempt to answer your question. Versus how we place value in indigenous world culture and tradition. Think about an indigenous culture who doesn't have paper money, who doesn't have coins, who doesn't have to pay for their water, who doesn't have to pay for their housing, who can go pick their food off the vine, go harvest, you know, the calf, the goat, you know, from, from, their, from their flock or, or fleet, uh, who, who doesn't have to necessarily pay taxes to the city, the state, the government, et cetera. And at least not in the, in the Western way that we do that. And then think of how these connections with nature, connections with spirit, connections with power would have been formed originally. So you might have been the pot maker. I might have been the metallurgist, work with your metals. The next person might have dug the metals, might have harvested herbs, might have harvested roots. And so there's a whole different system of how we even apply economics, how we even apply value before we can even think about how we word it today, is it okay to charge for gifts? Now, let's look at it, you know, I also play the piano. I've been playing the piano since I was three years old, two or three years old. Is it okay for me to charge for that? Um, my mother, who many of you know is still an evangelical Christian um, in the church, it's, is it okay for her to charge for her services at the piano, at the organ? Is it okay for the pharmacist to charge after having studied for, earned for his skill. Now, now, when we say gifts, you know, that's something we give. That's something that the deities give. That's something that the divine creators gift. Okay, but then we have to develop it into something, learn it, better understand it, grow up in it. And then when we say charge, it's also implied that there's a level of expertise there. We're seeing people who are claiming gifts Monday and who are charging for readings on Friday. We're seeing people who are claiming, you know, they were born with gifts and never thought about it, never had a place or position to, to explore them. And now they're at a particular crossroads in their life and on the next day they're charging. And so we gotta be clear again, we're using Western words to describe spiritual things, to describe indigenous things. 
and to describe things that many people simply don't understand um, and don't understand even in the manipulation of the cards, even in the manipulation of the gemstone, even in the manipulation of the, of the cowrie shells, still don't really understand. Uh, if that were the case, our whole idea of integrity would be different in the community. Our whole idea about what we would allow to be, you know, made a sacrilege, what we would allow to be um, sullied, much like many of you guard your politics and guard your religion and, and guard your mama and, and, you know, guard your favorite football team. We don't seem to apply those same rules when it comes to spirit and spirituality today. And, and, and I'm here to say it, it's a trend, but it's temporary, like most trends. It has everything to do with availability, technology, uh, awareness, or lack thereof, but, but availability of instant awareness. I can Google certain things that I have no knowledge of and speak and teach about them tomorrow or the next day as if I do. And that's why I say, um, even in the selling of gifts, uh, it's okay to sell gifts, but but I would check the footprint. If I wanted to, I would check mine. And then as if I were one who was seeking out, I would check theirs. It's a two-way street. Um, I had not only one deck of cards, several deck of cards for well over 20 years before I ever used them to provide a service and absolutely before I use them um, in terms of charging money. So there's a, there's a point of integrity that has to be considered there with the question. And I appreciate the question, particularly in the nature of the day. Greetings, um, each and every one of you. Um, I certainly do appreciate you for being present. Forgive me for leaning in, but I have to see uh, what's being talked about in the chat that I may have missed and or overlooked. I don't intend to miss or overlook anyone. Are you wrong for calling on certain gen for help? Absolutely. Um, traditionally in ATR, you don't call on gen to assist you in anything, uh, in, any more than you would demons to assist you. Now, having said that, that's exactly what goes on at, at many degrees and levels of witchcraft. People who are operating in Christianity, for instance. Um, I have a member in my family who was a hardcore psalmist, if you will, for many years uh, before she sort of made this 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 change. Um, you know, psalmist. She believed in the power of the spells in the Book of Psalms. She burned candles. She applied roots, she applied powders, you know, she laid down tricks um, utilizing the book of Psalms and would today assert that she's a Christian. Um, so I had the same conversation with a beloved yesterday. We first have to be clear that in the world of demonology, in the world of jinn, there's there is absolutely light and dark, good and bad useful and not useful. And there are rules to it. There's protocols to it. But the idea of just invoking jinn, just invoking demons to assist you, to do your bidding without payback, without recycling, even in the native, in, I, I keep saying native when I mean indigenous American cultures, there's an understanding that you don't take from nature, you don't take from creation without giving back. It's a reciprocal process. And many, you know, vegans, vegetarians, green earth individuals would, would say that's a problem with our relationship in Western culture with nature in general. We see it as a resource for our use, our abuse. We see it as an abundant resource that has no end, that has no beginning. So we can use it, waste it, you know, uh, 
use it for really foolish stuff that ends up in the bottom of your sea or bottom of your ocean. And so we are now applying those very same ideals spiritually as practice practitioners when we attempt to come at these traditions in a Western context, all of us live in a Western context. We can, let's not argue about that. If you live in, 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 in 2019, if you're in the UK, if you're in the US, hell, if you're in Nigeria, you're living in the Western world. You got cell phone, you're watching me on some internet, some form of technology. Um, maybe you drink Coke, maybe you drink Pepsi. You know, you're, you're in it. You wear gym shoes with somebody else's name on it. Um, I can remember the day, um, uh, me and Tony were talking about this yesterday. I can remember the day that I threw out all my Western clothes. Completely just went through like a tornado, like, oh yeah, threw out everything. Jeans, slacks, ties, t-shirts, everything. And I was a little butt naked for 60, 90 days. You know, I had the two or three dashikis that I had. I had the two or three, you know, Hindu pants, you know, white pants that you can basically wear with any uh, indigenous African, Indian, Islamic attire. A lot of the Islamic attire you see is being produced in, in India. A lot of the uh, African textiles are being produced in India. But I'm talking about from a cultural perspective. I can remember the day, the hour that I threw out everything. And it's symbolic of obviously an inward change showing up on the outside, but it's also symbolic of an inward change that can't be masked with any costume, with any attire. And that is the idea that we have to first get rid of what we think we know. And that's a place of vulnerability for most humans, uh, getting rid of what you think you know, even if it's not in the presence of someone else, even if it's not, you know, with your mama standing over you with a belt, even if it's, you know, not in the classroom with, with the teacher, you know, outing you for what you may or may not know. And I'm talking about an inward process that has to happen where you have to, one, be willing to be absolutely truthful with yourself, tell the truth about who you are, what you know, what you don't know, and what you need and desire from spirit. And that includes, you know, I want to hit the lotto, but I'm not asking for anything else. That includes, I want to access spirit to help me in my love life, but you're not considering anything else. Um, I, I don't even feel, feel comfortable saying it, but it's like we all need critical thinking 101. You know, how, knowing how to think, where to begin, how to apply. Um, I get those questions often, you know, even with detailed notes, pamphlets, books. How do I then do? How the, then do I arrange? How then do I apply? And some of you are fearful of even yourselves. And I don't think it's, you know, self-fear, like that kind of thing. I think it's a fear of what we really don't know and a fear of asking, how often do you use words? Do you use concepts in a conversation with friends, family, whomever, and people nod, people say, yeah, I like that. But how often do you ask, do you understand what I just said? I do it a lot, especially <laughs> with my clients and, and my godchildren. I do it a lot. What did I just say? What did you just hear me say? Yeah, it's a therapeutic way of communicating, but it's also a way of getting to clarity about what's being asked, what's being said, and being sure you understand the response. And then you don't take that information out and duplicate something that harms you. So we first got to be clear about why we want the access, what we intend to do with the access, what is our purpose with and for the access. I started out at the top of the show that you got to give it away to keep it. You have to. 
I don't care if you're Tesla, if you're Freud, if, if you're uh, Carter, if you're Carver, let's name some black scholars and some black uh, inventors. I don't care who you are. You have to give that away to keep it. It's more power. It's more knowledge. It's more voodoo than any one person can contain in their head if it's real voodoo. And many of you have a misunderstanding about Ashe, Elaxe, Ashe. Ashe is, is a universal energy that's shared. It's not owned. No one owns it. No one can buy it. No one can contain it unto themselves. It can be conferred upon you. It can be transferred, shared, but it's a collective thing. There's no isolation in this. There's no isolated witch. There is none. That, that don't really exist in ATR. That doesn't exist in indigenous world traditions. For indeed, there's nothing in nature that's isolated. Quartz is not isolated in nature. Penicillin ain't isolated in nature. You know, herb, herbal plants that heal are not in isolation in nature. So we've got to stop thinking in these Western Eurocentric new age magical kind of terms and take on a more indigenous mindset first from the inside, which requires being honest, but, but then knowing what you lack information in and then being willing to do that work, um, being willing to do the homework associated with that. Okay, you, you're also beloved inviting extra stuff. I, I, I assure you, <laughs> I assure you, um, Again, even if we look at it in, in terms of nature, gin, elves, fairies, gnomes are universally associated with nature. The plant, the ground, the ability to shape shift, which means turning into various physical forms. We don't associate them um, as we do angels, orisha, um, Hello. even ascended ancestors who then Are impart wisdom to us, who then impart knowledge to us. Um, it's a very dangerous game um, and, and we see it all the time. Um, I have a very popular video about tarot cards and, and how tarot cards themselves, because of the wood nature, because of the paper nature, Paper meaning something that has been clearly manipulated and handled by a human. And in the case of commercial tarot cards, by many humans, unknowns to you. And so they carry and hold and contain a different level of energy than your quartz does, than some of your other implements, minerals, metals, and tools do. Uh, so there's absolutely a hierarchy and an evolution in the spirit realm that's not taught in the West, that's little understood in the West. Um, and and it's, a, it's a dangerous zone. And I would say, though the awareness of it is limited, the effects of it are great. If you can envision the common cold, if you can envision the flu, if you can envision salmonella, hepatitis, Ebola, and you understand and you take measures of protection and caution and hygiene and cleanliness as it relates to that on the physical, biological, chemical level, then why don't we do that with, with witchcraft? Why wouldn't we do that with voodoo? Why wouldn't we do that with spirits? And sometimes the easiest spirits to attract, to, to, to draw, to invoke, cause the most damage. Cause the most damage. Those that take a little bit more work, like Oshun. Many of you have a love affair with Oshun, Orisha romance with Oshun. Oshun is the most difficult Orisha to work with. 
You ask any qualified Ifa Orisha practitioner, ask any native born Nigerian who's operating in, in Orisha, they're going to tell you Oshun is the most difficult to work with. But many people claim connection to Orisha, claim connection to Oshun, claim favor with Oshun, claim to be the children of Oshun, you know, and it's all smiles and laughter and, you know, honey and gold and breast assist with Alekis dripping and, and it's it's really not authentic to Oshun. The color yellow is not even authentic to Oshun in West Africa. So we've got to be clear about this idea of doing things authentically, originally, indigenously, correctly. And correctly is a relative word because it's correct specific to the system in which you're operating in. So the idea of Catholic saints might be correct in Haitian voodoo if it's applied correctly. The idea of Catholic saints might be correct in Lukomi if it's applied correctly. The idea of mixing and matching and, and, and throwing together, and, and you hear me say that, and you think I'm talking about the outward stuff. I'm talking about the stuff that some of y'all mail me with ultimately call me with, ultimately need a reading for. I'm always intrigued by readers who need readings. I'm always intrigued by that. No judgment, but I'm always intrigued by readers and psychics and neurologists and, you know, I'm just intrigued by it. And for me, I have questions. It's my wiring. I'm a Labor Day Virgo. <laughs> I got ass burgers. It's it's my nature. It's my wiring to question. I'm more blue than I am red. I am. I really am. I'm more left brain than I am right brain. Um, you assume that psychic, spiritualist, artisans, creative people live in the air, live in the ether, and completely operate um, from their right brain. And, and things have to make sense to me. Things have to, the magic has to line up with the math. The magic has to line up with the math, with science, with the understanding of minerals, with the understanding of geometry, they have to line up. They have to make sense. And, and in order for you to call it spell, to call it a ritual, then there has to be some consistency to the formula. It's not, I feel, oh, let me, it's not a gumbo like that. It's not a gumbo like that. It's not. It's not. So we can't then while debating the science and the practice and how to do it and how it's not done, we can't then deny and ignore the real spirit forces, gen, demons, elementals that operate within these traditions, that operate within in these, these uh, practices. And so I enjoy study. I enjoy going back to the Nordic period, the Celtic period, um, the the Kemetic period, the Mero period, the uh, um, <clears throat> um, various uh, schools and locations, scholarly schools and locations throughout the world, and delving in to what's not on page one of your Google search. I'm on page 50 of the Google search. I'm on the last page of the Google search. I'm deeper than what's being paid to be push, pushed to the front and what's being overutilized that's showing up in the front. That seven day calendar is overutilized and that's why it shows up so frequently, so often, so early on in your search engines to the, to the degree that many of you think that that's real and that's legitimate. And it's not. Uh, we operate on a four-day calendar in the West Side. So we've got to be clear about intentions, motivations, not just of your frenemies and your haters and your 
fake Bible Niles and your fake voodoo practitioners and, and fake readers, but also at a much deeper level than that. And are, are we tricking ourselves with greed, with laziness, with gluttony, with a, a lack of interest, with a lack of desire of, of really doing the work? Eshu only has to move one piece out of position to confuse you. The Eshu only has to move to the left, turn to the right, to twirl, Ibarra, to twirl, to, to, to spin, the one who spins. And, and that's at the root of, of many of the names that we identify Eshu with, is spinning, turning. So the idea of the trick is often just Slight, slight of hand, slight of hand. And, and we slight the hand. <laughs> you know, we watch the magician on, you know, the, the talent show, the popular talent show on TV right now. You know, we watch the magicians do their thing. But are they really tricking us? Is the illusion about hiding the truth? Or is the illusion really about us just not seeing? or paying attention and taking note of what might really be in front of us. And so when we go back in time, back in history, back to what your great grandmom and them thought about demons and jinn, what your ancestors believed about jinn, demons and jinn, then we have to look at shape shifting and even alien technology. I keep promising I'm gonna do a whole show just on Alien technology and voodoo. Now, I know it's a lot of alien technology shows that's real popular on TV right now, but I want to do one specific to alien technology and voodoo. So I'm not going to digress. But some of the things that the ancients saw and witnessed and documented that have now, under scientific scrutiny, either been, been proven to be much more mysterious than what we previously know or have been uncovered to be either mm. untruths altogether or just illusions of truth. This is the realm that Jen operate in and Jen, beloved, will absolutely present to you what you want, what you think you need, what gives you, you know, the most immediate gratification while binding you to a higher debt, binding you to a debt. First, that many people go into this not understanding. Even if you read um, the European witchcraft books on how to bind demons, um, um, how to work in, in, in magic circles, occult forms, they tell you that there's an interchange that goes on. And these demons, just like Arisha, like certain particular foods, like certain plant life, like certain uh, liqueurs, like certain um, combinations of products, you know, mixed together, you know, combined, formulated in, into other, other things. And so, yeah, you have to be real careful um, with that. I, I don't personally suggest it at all. Uh, particularly for people who aren't well trained, well knowledgeable. I don't like. I know y'all don't like to hear the word initiated. <laughs> well trained, um, well knowledgeable, beyond the master's degree, doctor's degree level study in your astrology, in your numerology, in your tarot, etc. That's what makes your gifts shine forward, come to the surface, gives your gifts indeed a valuable, marketable, valuable in, in the world context. Even in ancient world, your kings, your queens, your royal courts and royal houses had paid spiritualists, paid astrologists, paid numerologists, but pay in ancient world would have been my housing, my food, my drink, my clothing, a, a team of people to help me to maintain my garden. Who does that today? 
And when we look at religion, the Catholic Church, the Protestant churches, the Baptist churches, the evangelical churches, the mosques, the temples, the synagogue, who, who pays for the brick and mortar, who supports the, the, the teams of people who do the building, do the creation. So when we talk about our gifts, there are shortcuts being made today because of the internet. There are too many shortcuts being made between the light coming on and people deciding that they somehow need to be offering a gift and charging money for it. I also ask that you in your research, look at them. So many of these public profiles have fake pictures, glossy photos, you know, um, with no footprint, with names with no footprint, even in the offering of, of gifts and skills, I use my real name. I use my real name. I'm not using the username. I'm not truth, light, God is seeker. I'm not magic card reader number two. I'm using my real name. So all of those things matter. All those things matter when we're considering something as life and death as your health, spirit life. It's just life and death is your health, right? The flu, the cold, the Ebola. If you're not looking at the evils that people contaminate the world with, as we look at Ebola, you need to open your eyes. <laughs> you know, it can literally jump on you like that. Some of you, all you got to do is go to your Facebook homepage and met Jen and already jumped off. Just read some of those posts, particularly those posts that are designed to get under your skin, get in your crawl, designed to get likes, designed to get as many angry faces as possible. We say, oh, that's just a social media game, but that's how Jen worked. That's how Jen worked. So, you know, you, you, you're sitting at the bus stop. I'm gonna use that as an example. I haven't rode the bus in years, but I'm gonna use that as an example. You're sitting at the bus stop. You on your way to your job, they on their way to their job. Brother's reading the newspaper and he starts talking about the game. He starts talking about the president. He starts talking about, you know, the weather. And then the argument ensues. And some people smile, hey, have a good day. You are on to your destination. Others carry that and think about it. They might not talk about it anymore, but carry that. And that energy is now inside you. And then others take that in like the cold and then you got to sneeze. Then it's got to come out. And so, so now you're on your blog post. Now you're on your Instagram live going off, you know, about a particular person, place, thing, or event. And you've been a part of a gen interaction. You've been a part of a gen exchange. And you might think, well, hey, you know, I, I had an hour with it and I let it go. But now you've passed it off, quite possibly to friends, family, children, coworkers, et cetera, stranger, without even being cognizant of it. And in the, in the scheme of pop culture, sometimes people post stuff because they want the response. They want the exchange. But man, they're also carrying energy with that. All you got to do is watch one or two episodes of Yana Van Zandt to know that these reality stars are carrying that energy at a much deeper level than what they're willing to readily admit or speak to. And so we, in this culture, say it's mental health, say it's emotions, say it's just my feelings. I was in my feelings. We might make up excuses. Well, I was high. I was drunk. She pushed me to it. But we don't say the devil made me do it anymore. I think that went out of style in the 50s with, with Flip Wilson. Um, we don't say the devil made me do it anymore. And we don't think 
or assume it anymore, even with the prevalence of spirit activity, even in pop culture, from from the charm, from from uh, I'm trying to go back as far as I can in time. Bewitch, the monsters. So where how far back am I? The 50s, the 60s, <laughs> you know, Bewitch, the monsters, um, you know, the other family that tried to copy the monsters, the Adams family, you know, the idea has been coming at us sooner than the last five years, earlier than the last 10 years, earlier than the internet. But it has all changed now with the invention of the internet, social media, and the new dynamics, the new doorways, the new portals that now have been added to Pandora's box. So we've got to be clear about spirits. How, how do you know it's a Arisha and not a Jen? How do you know it's an Arisha? and not a demon. How do you know? How do you know? We, we're embracing things too fast, too quick, too soon, too all get, all get out without paying attention. And right now there are too many things going on within our community, within these circles. When I, when I look over, I'm looking at you all in the chat <laughs> that are happening that we all are aware of. And you want to act like Jen aren't real? We, we want to say, oh, that's bad character. That, that That's not Iwa Pele. We want to say, oh, well, that's just a bad person who goes in and, and kills up children, kills up family, shoots up the place, b bombs up the place. And, and, and we're still wanting to look at bad actors in bad religions with bad beliefs, with with negative ideas and not consider the 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 portals that have been opened as we have this leisure, this freedom to experiment, if you want to use that word, to dab a little bit, to get a couple of books and try a few things without real serious commitment to it or any real serious study into it. So we got to talk about Jim. We got to talk about embodiment of spirit, spirits that enter the body. And some of you ain't that too long coming out of our Christian experience. I know you. Some of you are not too far out of that. So the idea of the embodiment of spirit ain't too far removed from your consciousness. You say the Holy Spirit, but you also open to many more. And many of you are picking up many more in these churches, in these synagogues, in these temple spaces that you are equating to the environment, the people, a particular personal interaction that, that you had with a particular person, place, or thing that broke down or didn't go right. And, and now, particularly if you're keeping a, a journal, a grimoire, <laughs> that's what a grimoire is, there's a pattern here that you're not willing to see. And the spirit might be on you. The gym might be with you. And when, when, when the same situation happens enough times without changing the position of the pieces on the board, without spinning the board, hell, without kicking the board over, then you have to then look at self, look at self. And sometimes there's gen interaction going on, demon interaction going on. So we gotta be clear about what we're doing, my friends, my family, my loved ones, as we continue our journey into uh, ourselves as we continue our journey into better understanding. Yes, um, universal, um, 
you should have typed that in all capital letters. Um, that's absolutely true because if we look at spirits, demons, jinn, the ones that are trapped in earth law, there are those that are most elevated, most high, that extend beyond our stratosphere, beyond our atmosphere, beyond our location in the heavens, if you will. But then there are those that are trapped in the earth law, trapped in the physicality, trapped into the ground, trapped into wood, trapped into clay, uh, trapped into metal, et cetera, that also have contained with them, within them our most base needs, desires, feelings, emotions. Even sometimes when we look at the chakra system and we think of what first chakra people are, for instance, people who live in their most base nature, their animal nature, survival, eat, drink, sex, propagation, war-like behavior. Many of the things that we attach to nature and when we look at higher consciousness, higher evolved spirit form, then we start enumerating a whole different you know, list, a whole different idea of what we associate with that, what we attach to that. So indeed there are people praying in many religions and their prayers are being answered by earth gravity based deities, jinn, demon, spirits that are trapped in earth proximity and, and are not evolved and, and do resonate. We say lights resonate with lights that do resonate. So there are spirit of gambling, for instance, that all gamblers have a way of tapping into, are, are sensitive to, are, are open to that some of us just aren't open to. And I might go in a casino three times out of a year, usually with a tourist or somebody from out of town. And, and you know, we go and we eat the lovely buffet, you know, and, and you know, play $10, $20 in a machine. And I might hit, I might hit well, but I'm done after my $20. And I'm out of there. So you might say Lady Luck. You might say the gym. You might say the Orisha. Blessed. But if you don't have Iwa Pele, then now it's a, it's, it's, it's a mess. Because if you're in there and your only interest is feeding the spirit of gambling, that's different than you and your mama and your cousin and your husband hanging out at the casino. It's a great time. We don't, you know, you put twenty dollars in and you healthily, just like we don't over medicate or shouldn't, just like we shouldn't self medicate, but but we do. So it's the same thing in, in spirit. If you are of Iwa Pele, good character, balanced character, then Lady Luck and all of her sisters could be standing around you. You're not gonna put your $20 in there and, and win, and then put all your winnings back into the machine. Now you're talking about a gin, if not an addiction. Now, now I know I'm stepping on some toes. I know as people are watching now, maybe even in archive, you might gamble, you might play the number, you might do scratch offs, whatever. But if you're spending your rent, you're spending your food money, you're spending your kids' money, you're spending your gas money, if you're going into debt, you might have an addiction. You might have some other mental health thing happening that, and there are experts for that, but you might also be dealing with a gym. So there are mojos, tricks, people buy to win the lotto, get great deals of money, win at the casino. A common request for many qualified practitioners is help me hit win the lotto, help me, you know, win a large sum of money, etc. And there are indeed ways to access that, but it's not separate from your karma. It's not separate from Iwa Pele. 
It's not separate from your bank account, your spiritual bank account, your credits, your debits, what you got in savings, etc. All of those formula come into play when you start asking spirit, asking God, asking goddess, asking Jen, asking Orisha, asking demons to do very specific things. Now you're in a whole realm beyond faith, beyond spirit, beyond dabbling. And so it, it requires a deeper look. <laughs> it requires a deeper look. Um, and sometimes you'll get those res immediate responses, universal. Am I reading your name right? I'm sorry. Universe? Univereal? I hope I'm reading your name right. But I'm saying universe when I'm this far from the screen. Um, yeah, their prayers are being answered sometimes by forces other than what you would like. Uh, some of you are praying to your ancestors, for instance. And so some of the blessings, some of the negatives that are happening. Because some of you do things in the exact opposite. While some of you are saying, you know, I'm working with the jinn, the orisha, the spirits, the ancestors, and it's helping. And, and, and it's working out. And it's beneficial. Then there's others who feel that those same very things are creating negative occurrences in their lives. This the same relative that I mentioned earlier in the show, who was a psalmist, <laughs> works the book of Psalms, um, also invertedly before she made this conversion, um, blamed Eshu and the ancestors for things moving around in her house for negative occurrences in her life, for people feeling some kind of way about her um, and, and was not able to first examine self. And in all things, we examine self first. First, whether it's a practitioner doing your work or a practitioner doing their own work, in all things first is self-examination first. Just like the movie, The Poltergeist, the original movie, The Poltergeist, you, you can't now go into that, that dimensional time space unclean and, and think that you can't. Even the, the uh, uh, medium was deceived. Even though the medium then became possessed, became possessed by an indwelling spirit during the course of her ceremony to free Carol Ann. Y'all know the movie. <laughs> Go on and pull that movie, Paul the Geist, the original. I keep dating myself by age, I know. But there are truths, even in pop culture, there are truths embedded even in pop culture. The, the original TV show, Charm, had many truths embedded in that. And if, and if you're a fan of Charmed or ever watched Charm, even the white girls know you can't just go in and play around with these spirits all willy-nilly. They'll trick you. They can create illusions. You have to be clear about what you're seeing. Some of you have studied comedic science, the Egyptian book of the coming forth. Uh, the Europeans called it the book of the dead. That book was about not being tricked in the afterlife, not being tricked in the underworld not being given to illusions, not being given to, to frightful things and not being able to interpret whether it's frightful as an illusion or if it's frightfully of danger to you. Uh, and then of course, all the spells and rituals and tricks and, and offerings that the uh, Egyptians uh, uh, associated with that. It's not very much different than that, the navigation of the spirit realm. And so in, in, in terms of my topic about alien intervention, it's not much different than that in terms of how we view space and outer space and our knowledge of the chemistry and the makeup and the balance of space and then our ability to have mobility and then our ability to have mobility in it, literally and figuratively. Um, 
a great deal of my meditative space is in space. I love guided meditative uh, uh, trances in outer space. Cosmic knowledge, universal knowledge, knowledge that transcends Earth, knowledge that transcends just what humanity in this particular dispensation knows and is aware of. So there are many levels, many levels. And, and I strongly support meditation, transcendental, transcendental meditation, guided meditations um, for experiencing the spirit realm, for learning the spirit realm, gaining greater mobility in the spirit realm, and then knowing how to identify and interact with jinn, demons, spirits, and then your ancestors. Almost every holy book suggests that we entertain spirits unaware. It's a, it's a human condition. So it's in all the world religions, it's in all the world traditions. Somehow in the spirit group, the new age groups, the black magic groups, we've lost connection to that, to, to that knowledge, that absolute truth. So you have to know what it is that you're seeing. You have to test the spirit, as they say, and know is it for you? Is it beneficial to you? There's that person, that group, that thing that everybody loves, that everybody finds, you know, happening, that the one or two just can't get with, that the one or two just, um, I don't know. And then at some point, there's the news story, there's the, you know, there's the, the, the post, there's the outing that you all have been deceived. You all have been deceived as a group, collectively. And, and, and I don't want to speak directly to one particular scenario, but generally speaking, often, if not always, the things that are utilized are the illusions of your own mind what right looks like, what holy is supposed to look like, what sanctified is supposed to look like, what Orisha is supposed to look like, you know, and, and in today's culture, it's shiny cars, stacks of money, weaponry, you know, eating fine food, being out and about at the, at the best places, and we lose sight of what's real, what's true, What's reality um, in many cases? I am so for you and with you, beloveds, and I'm grateful for you always being present here. Uh, even when I'm not always present at high noon, U.S. Central Standard Time for Revolutionary Hoodoo, New Orleans Hoodoo Secrets and Recipes, I do invite you to return again on tomorrow at high noon, U.S. Central Standard Time for another powerful and exhilarating and information-packed uh, episode of my show, The Power Lunch, here at High Noon on YouTube Live. And I do invite you to continue to communicate with me by email at Divine Prince, D-I-V-I-N-E, Divine Prince at houseofthedivineprince.com. You can also visit my website at www houseofthedivineprince.com. I also invite you to visit me, support me on Psychic World. I am active on just one psychic network at this time. So if you're seeing um, old pictures, old profiles, old posts of me on Kasamba, I don't do Kasamba anymore. Live persons, I do not do live persons anymore. Uh, keen, I do not do keen anymore. Um, there's one more network that I'm neglecting right now. Um, when I recall it, I'll, I'll, I'll shout it out. The only site that I'm working on right now is Psychic World. Is Psychic World. Um, Psychicworld.com. And then you can either uh, scroll the visible database and find me, or you can 
click my URL, which I'm going to recite now for you out loud, which is www.psychicworld, P S Y C H I C W O R L D dot com forward slash psychics with an S on again forward slash the hyphen divine hyphen prince hyphen tie hyphen emeka and if you are familiar with the hyphen that's your subtraction mark that's the dash in the middle if you will otherwise you can reach me uh, by way of my website but some of you um, might be interested in my services psychic world is a permanent service site so don't reach out to me on psychic world for ritual work for complicated work um just readings just basic uh by the minute per minute readings um, until next time remember that all is truly and indeed a blessing if you can just see beyond the veils for it's all just an illusion and a test one of the greatest divine mysteries of this life cycle. I should.